oyster shells are the foundation of reef restoration efforts. And the Chesapeake Bay Foundation and the Museum of Industry are taking part in the shell recycling program. Yeah, so Marty Bassey is live from the Baltimore Museum of Industry with more. Hello, Marty. Well, hello, Cena. Hello, Meg. Hello, Tim. I know you're in the studio. Good morning, everyone. It is Monday in the Big Town. That is the Museum of Industry behind me, but we are in the northeast part of the parking lot, basically kind of used for storage. This is Kelly Fiala with Save the Bay. This is Ben Lewis with Conrad's Restaurants. It's all about recycling oyster shells so that you can plant spat little baby oysters on them and they start to grow on the oyster shells and that's how we repopulate the oyster population. Tell them real quick how many how many oysters all, all Conrad's locations use over the course of a year. Sure. Uh, we go through thousands of bushels of oysters a year. Thousands of bushels of oysters a year. And you all take the oyster shells, what was that wonderful meal we had, and you turn it into a habitat for other oysters to grow and feed and clean the Chesapeake Bay. Exactly. So Chesapeake Bay Foundation, we recycle the shell, we plant babies on there, and each recycled shell can equal up to nine or ten new baby oysters. We're talking a huge project, and we'll tell you how you can get involved coming up shortly back at TV Hill. And we are eating oysters all year long now. It used to be Ben Lewis with Conrad's five locations. You're the general manager of the Parkville location. The Parkville location. You just told us that with all the locations combined, thousands of bushels of oysters a year. Used to be you would not, and you live on the eastern shore, it used to be you would not eat an oyster in a month that didn't have an R in it, May, June, July, August. But now with modern refrigeration, we you serve oysters all year long. Year round, yep. The demand for oysters has never been bigger. Mm -hmm. Hence, the oyster population has to keep up with demand. I mean, we're talking the livelihood of watermen. There, there's a lot of economic impact here. Absolutely. But you have to conserve the crop. So now you take the used oyster shell and you put spat on it. But here's the question, okay? It's not like I'm going to Conrad's or wherever you're watching us from where you get oysters and or crabs. It's not like I'm going to say, can I have a bag because I'm going to recycle these. So how are you getting other restaurants involved? Um, I guess it'd be sharing that we're recycling. Um, we have trash cans all we have trash cans and we have um, the cages at our outside of our other locations. Um, so just showing that we're collecting two. So if some, so in other words, somebody has a backyard party and they've hired somebody who's going to be shucking oysters. You can take those to one of your locations. Yes. Or you can come down to the Museum of Industry. Are there where other than the Museum of Industry or in front of a Conrad's? So there are public locations throughout the state of Maryland that CBF has. Um, this is our first walkable public location, so the only uh, walkable shovel cycling station in Baltimore. Um, and so for people that maybe don't have transportation, they can walk here and they recycle their right, But what if somebody's watching your Carroll County, maybe up in Cecil County, yeah. Middle Anne Arundel County? How can you find the closest location? So you can go to our website, Chesapeake Bay Foundation, so cbf.org. Um, and look at our shell recycling stations. So we have uh, a list of the participating restaurants like Conrad's, and then we also have the locations of our public shell but, drop -off. Okay, it's all well and good, but I'm going to assume that 90% of oysters consumed in this state come from restaurants. Yep. So are, are you all going to kind of lead a charge to get restaurant A, B, C, and D to start getting in on this program? It's a big deal. Sure, yeah. Uh, we start posting uh, across our social media platforms that we are involved and uh, spread the news. And that's what it boils down to. So go to your, your, your favorite crab place. You know, it's interesting to say crab place, but you know it's going to be oysters and shrimp, and clams and everything. And ask if they are, push the wagon forward. Ask if they're participating in Save the Oyster Shells. Coming up next half hour, we're going to change locations. You have 60 bins down by the water here at the Museum of Industry. We do. We, we have a 60-cage oyster garden. We um, recruit the public to help take care of those baby oysters that we've planted on the recycled shell. May I have one of those real sure. quick? Sure. Okay, here it is right there. These are all baby oysters. You always hear about spat, but that's how they start growing, and then they establish their own life and their own colony. We're going to go ahead and throw it back to TV. It's a cool project. Hello and good morning. Chesapeake Bay Foundation, Save the Bay. Kelly Fiala is with us. Ben Lewis from Conrad's Restaurants, the partnership between, you know, 
foundation and, uh, and, and retail. Explain what we're looking at right here. We're now waterside. There are 13 of these cages. Yes, so this is um, one of our public oyster guarding locations. There's 13 cages along this stretch here at Downtown Sailing Center. We have 60 cages here total. Um, and the benefit of growing oysters out in these cages is we take that recycled shell from restaurants and public locations like Conrad's. We plant baby oysters directly onto it, and then we grow them out to keep them protected from predators um, and against other things. Um, these oysters will eventually get planted out on sanctuary reefs. Can we, uh, let's, let's go ahead and bring one up so you can see what it looks like. When you're talking about predators. I'm assuming we're talking about rockfish? So um, blue crabs are actually one of the biggest predators um, of really? oysters in the Chesapeake Bay. Because I know that, uh, blue, that rockfish can actually take apart a blue crab. Yeah, so a lot of things like baby oysters, um, and so by keeping them in these cages, protecting them for nine months to a year, um, it gives them a much better chance of survival when they're actually out on that sanctuary reef. Now, these were, before, we've been covering the dolly moving from the Key Bridge this morning. Mike Helgren out there doing a great job. They, these were going to go to Fort Carroll. Correct. Just on the eastern side of the bridge. But that has to change now. Yes. So we um, typically plant our Baltimore oysters in the Patapsco River here. Uh, there's a sanctuary right next to Fort Carroll. Um, and with the Keybridge tragedy, we've decided to plant all of our oysters just kind of one river down in the Magathy River. So we're working with the uh, Magathy River Association to get all of these oysters planted out. They're still going to be doing good in the bay, and, um, just in a different location. And just real quick, you're going to find this interesting. This is the northernmost part on the bay that you can actually grow oysters because of the saline content of the bay. Correct. This is the furthest north we can grow. Um, oysters do need a certain salinity in order to um, grow and reproduce, and so this is the farthest up we can go. If you go way south, 20 miles south of the Bay Bridge, the water is so salty, there's actually shrimp in the water. Mm -hmm. uh, people don't know that. Harrington Harbor, Harrington Harbor north and south, you look in between the uh, piers, you nice to see these little teeny shrimp. Five locations of Conrad's. What yes, is y'all's website? Uh, Conrad'sCrabs.com. Uh, can you find out more information about how you guys are participating in this by, uh, you, by contacting any any store? Uh, either the Bel Air Market or the uh, Parkville location would probably be the safest bet. Okay. And your all's website is again? It is uh, cbf.org. Okay. So if you have any, an outdoor crab and oyster feast, you can bring your shells to many different locations. And you guys are working with the industry to get your shells to these locations. All right. Cool story this morning. Waterside's always a good place to be. Back to TV Hill.